A recent arc of the Star Wars comic called Mutiny on Mon Cala told the story of how the Rebel Alliance came to acquire the Mon Calamari fleet that would be instrumental in the Battle of Endor. I thought it would be fun to cover the legend story of the fleet, where it came from, how it joined the Rebellion, and beyond, so that's what we're going to do today. 4,000 years before the events of the films, the shipyards of Mon Calamari began construction when the Mon Calamari and Quarren people began to wonder what existed beyond their planet. Together, they built several orbital construction facilities and a number of starliners to begin exploration. Those ships stumbled across Republic vessels that had begun to enter Mon Calamari space. The planet joined the Republic, and their fleet became the main defense force for their area of the galaxy. It wasn't until the start of the Separatist movement when Count Dooku visited Mon Cala that the full potential of the shipyards was realized by outsiders. Dooku considered their abilities to be as advanced as the shipyards of Fondor, but when the Mon Calamari refused to join the Confederacy of Independent Systems, Dooku attacked their orbital construction platforms so they could not be used against him. When the Clone Wars came to an end, Mon Cala was quickly brought under Imperial rule by the command of Moff Tarkin. The goal was to adapt the Mon Calamari shipyards for Imperial use, but engineers found it difficult to adapt Mon Calamari tools to work with standard Imperial equipment, and so the pride of the Mon Cala people sat unused for many years. Gial Akbar helped found a resistance on the planet that fought against Imperial occupation for nearly two decades. When the Empire had finally had enough, one year before the Battle of Yavin, they bombarded three surface cities to push the Mon Calamari into submission. Instead, the Mon Calamari and Quarren fought back with secret weapons the Resistance had been hiding. Surprised by the tactics and such a well-equipped uprising, the Empire retreated. Wasting no time, the Mon Calamari began modifying their starliners into warships, and the Rebel Alliance offered what defense they could to assist in the transition. Their help solidified the Mon Calamari vote to officially join the Alliance, and they began upgrading other Rebel ships as well. In five years, beyond just converting their Starliners, they also built eight new heavy cruisers and 50 escort ships. Let's take a quick break there just to compare everything here with what happened in canon. The comic also depicts an uprising on Mon Cala, although it happens after the Battle of Yavin, not before. It's also become known that the underwater buildings of the planets are in fact ships, so it sounds like orbital shipyards aren't as present in the new stories. But the need to convert normal buildings or ships into warships definitely happened, as we can see with the Profundity, which was once a government building. Finally, it would appear that the Mon Calamari fleet was already built and ready to use, but it was under Imperial occupation until the Uprising. But back to Legends history, the Mon Calamari fleet remained a major part of the New Republic fleet after the Battle of Endor. That also made Mon Cala a prime target for the surviving Empire. The shipyards were damaged by the World Devastators when the clone of Emperor Palpatine returned, but they were rebuilt and even expanded in the following years. When the Yuuzhan Vong invaded, Mon Calamari cruisers were produced as fast as possible to fight back against the extragalactic aliens. By the end of the war, the fleet was seen as a symbol of determination and hope in the face of defeat. The shipyards at Kuat, Bilbringi, and Fondor were all attacked during the invasion, but the Mon Calamari shipyards remained intact, prospering greatly through the Second Galactic Civil War. But 137 years after the Battle of Yavin, Mon Cala had once again fallen to the new Galactic Empire and were forced to make Imperial warships. That made them the target of the One Sith, who were determined to destroy the shipyards and all life on the planet. The shipyards were devastated, and Mon Cala's water was poisoned. Well, that was kind of a bummer of an ending, so sorry about that. Also, I know in Legends, Mon Cala was called Dak, but I went with Mon Cala here just to avoid confusion as we compared things with the new canon story. But that's it for today. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and consider checking out my Patreon page. As always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.